to restate your name, followed by the pound sign. Placed into the conference. Hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, second present in. Good morning, everyone. My name is Claude Landry. I work at the MSC, specifically at the CMC, or Canadian Meteorological Center, in the Development Division. And first, I must say that this project was originally uh, initiated by Pierre Bourgoin years ago, but since there, uh, has left uh, for another division, and uh, this project, Mesoscale Analysis, uh, was left more or less uh, at the evaluation stage. So my section, uh, the meteorological system section, um, which I work, as of now to pursue this work uh, to the operational uh, production stage. For now, we have to evaluate and improve it, but we're, we wish to bring this system to the production stage. And uh, but so we're not you know, all that familiar to this, all the subtlety of this system, but. Uh, I'll give you an overview of the basic principle of this system, and that in a few months uh, we will be able to give you more detail and with uh, objective verification to support the results. So, um, I will do a. Oh. Let's change the slides. <laughs> Oh, it, it works. It's slow. So these are the the uh, different um, uh, the overview, a little bit of introduction, context, and uh, I'll give you a quick description of the prototype, and we'll talk about the future development. So uh, in terms of the introduction, well, there is a need for a grid. Now casting prediction system to so our program, different programs for the public marine and aviation and all air quality. And there is a list here of uh, different requirements that we would like to have for, for this, uh, well, you know, now casting system. So, yes, real time observation and now casting weather element on a grid. Um, gets, you know, some deterministic and probabilistic weather element. Uh, the optimum use of all types of observations, all having a high resolution grid, pearl, and also a, a geographical grid. Um, all have having a reliable system and totally automated, and using some interpolation technique as well as extrapolation techniques, in, as input high resolution model. Also, having a weighted approach uh, as a function of projection time. Next slide. The context currently is that MSE operates a point grid now casting system, all integrated now casting uh, system. And uh, this system may actually support the uh, scribe system, which is the forecast production to prepare public marine and air quality forecast. So this term provides weather element only for the public program and for its any point forecasting system. It's not a, it's not a grid. And at the same time, uh, MSC is currently working on planning the next generation forecast system, and uh, which we call, we're, we're calling it CONOPS, or concept of operation. And uh, a gridded weather element approach is also uh, and bid for this new system. Uh, this scale analysis and now casting prototype that was uh, built by uh, Pierre Bourguin is quite promising. So, uh, and also this was produced by Pierre in order to compensate some other statistical technique like TAF tool or PUP tool, uh, since the in-base extrapolation techniques is was quite better in, in, in many cases. 
So this is the uh, scribe system, just to give you an overview and how the current uh, now casting system also integrate uh, into this uh, forecast projection system. So at that one end, or at the beginning as input, we have model data and all our other all other type of data. And we produce a matrix of all these of our selection of a selection of a uh, um, of uh, data. We send to the different storm prediction center, and which produce weather element out of this. And forecaster can uh, change these weather elements through the interface. And after that, these weather element goes to the production system and to uh, weather office, and you know for different users. The uh, that thing uh, currently, as it works, it's a point forecasting system, and it uses observation. Our radar and lightning, and uh, use a very short range, uh, use a very short range forecast system as well as NWP and statistic model as you must, and a set of rules that produce a sequence of weather elements that are co coherent uh, between each other, and the weather elements are sent to uh, the uh, scribe system, so the forecaster can use it uh, interactively. This forecast, but this is a point forecast system, and it's not on a grid. So this uh, system works essentially this prototype. The observation from surface station are converted into a an, an analysis. You grid uh, the rigging interpolation method, and the grid actually is is, is a fifty kilometer. If we extract hourly surface observation over all Canada and U.S., well, not all U.S., <coughs> and Western Greenland, and for different uh, weather elements that are listed here, and we build analysis at this uh, um, land, which is 50 kilometers, the Kriging method. And um, the consistency check also produced with a rule-based module, and ALT essentially is a first guess mesoscale analysis uh, done for precipitation type or occurrence, convection, and cloud cover. This is produced. Uh, this preliminary, preliminary analysis is uh, will, will be improved by using some other source of data. For the precipitation, precipitation type analysis, uh, we will radar data satellite and NWP. Comalysis will use Canadian Lightning Detector and so NWP model. And for cover analysis, we will use uh, mid-level analysis producing GO satellite data. So, you know, this is give you a, uh, the, 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 the different step, you know, in, in the process of producing this mesoscale analysis. So there's a sequence to respect no, so cover is done first, precipitation occurrences, and type, and type are done in this order. The convective analysis is uh, in, is independent of these of this uh, sequence. Final analysis will be extrapolated by a forward scheme using the NWP field, uh, either at five, either five percent of the 500 millibar or 100 uh, percent of the 700 bar field. Wind field. So, just to give you a, a, an overview, oh, uh, flow, okay, there it is. So, the cover essentially for the coast area and over the ocean, we take an average of the, these different uh, variables or satellite arts, which is the regional uh, um, deterministic probabilist system or prediction system. I change the slide. And the try, what we call the try field here is the first uh, cast, the uh, mesoscale uh, uh, system. So the interpolation field done by Kriging. And over the continent, basically the same thing, except there's more weight on the interpolation, uh, two times the uh, interpolation uh, field. Give you a, a quick overview of this is the resulting field, 
and uh, which is the cloud cover analysis. And so we have the CRIN, the trial field, satellite, and also the uh, uh, NWP model that contribute to produce this final field of cloud field. The uh, precipitation occurrence produced by combining the following information. So data, uh, radar composite, integrated cloud analysis, and precipitation occurrence, and our forecast of precipitation occurrence, which is the trial field. Uh, there's a weight that is given to each value. Information of the weighted value, if, it, if a certain threshold of precipitation will be diagnosed at this point. So this, again, it's a quick overview of the different input uh, to produce the precipitation occurrence analysis. The other, this is also a, a recent uh, image. You can see the uh, initial precipitation analysis in color. And the uh, NWP precipitation field in blue. You can see that's the base on observation that you know sometimes the model is not producing is producing precipitation why it, while it's not really observed. And melting occurrence field will look like this. So where you have these uh, blue. Uh, are essentially precipitation, where there's precipitation occurrence. Uh, note that we're not using all the observation, yeah, although the observation are produced here over the state, the uh, resulting occurrence is not uh, no, perfect because we're basically focusing on the uh, Canadian area. So precipitation type also is produced by combining the following information, so the interpolated type analysis, again, with using the Krigging, fine precipitation occurrence analysis, uh, the uh, NWP analysis, and the diagnosis temperature. So precipitation occurrence is at one point. The type uh, will be stood the first non-nil uh, of the following. So result of the Krigging analysis at that point near the nearby analysis, the model diagnosis, and if there if it will be rain, if temperature is above uh, three degrees Celsius, other otherwise it will be snow. So, so and again, it will be nil if there's nothing. The four level of type, so we basically diagnose no precip, liquid, solid, and freezing. Oh, sorry for the fault here. The um, resulting field based on the different input, so temperature, model, and the uh, interpolation type and occurrence. Intercase, color is slightly different here, but essentially we have O here, and uh, in this sort of uh, it's more, more uh, lit type. And the field that we're looking at is collection, so uh, produced by combining the following information, interpolation analysis of content using the uh, Krigging interpolation method, the lightning data, and also the lifting index from the uh, RDBS. And we're producing for a level of convection, so stable, obviously, TCU, ACC level, and also the level with CPU. So this is uh, a type of output that we get. We have the type, the showery type, and also the more intense convection in red. Once we've got these fields, uh, we think we have uh, a good representation of what, what is actually happening over a large area and well, at the synoptic scale. 
And uh, we will extrapolate the NW wind field to a precipitation dive convection and cloud cover. And uh, currently, the version that we're running, the prototype that we're running, use the 50% uh, of the 500 millibar RDPS wind. So, uh, sort of an, an example where you have a one hour forecast. The blue represents the uh, uh, current of uh, the observed precipitation, and the blue area is the same as what it was pushed uh, forward uh, of, of one hour. Okay. And another example here where uh, uh, it's, three hours, it's a three hour forecast, you can see the area has moved. So uh, we have put also at the same time T plus three the convective area. So probably by the intersection method you, you can put you can uh, combine these two uh, area convection and precipitation in order to find where the precipitation will be more convective. Example uh, where uh, um, have the the gray shade. Uh, our clouds, the precipitation type and convection also are also uh, combined. This is the uh, free rain event that went through Toronto and Hamilton uh, on the uh, of April. And uh, so you can see this, this is what the analysis at that time. And if we forward with the extrapolation, well, you will see they're moving uh, hour per hour uh, over Lake uh, Ontario, as well as the snow and the, uh, um, the precipitation liquid. And also, this is a more is this showery type, more type liquid precipitation. So, uh, as you can see, it's pretty rough. The the, the resolution is still at uh, not that high, so that's why we don't have much. Deep here, but we're we're looking to we're one of the project that we have is to improve the uh, the resolution increase resolution. So we can again moving. Uh, Pierre Bourguin did a little bit of verification uh, while he was uh, doing his project. Uh, he uh, focused on two uh, period, a warm season and a uh, season. Uh, the occurrence he was verifying the occurrence of precipitation. Um, so using the extrapolation mesoscale analysis extrapolation system, the prototype, using sampling uh, method to perform a probability of precipitation. Same approach for the uh, NWP, and so using the uh, statistical forecast system pub tool. Uh, which system is only based on the uh, use as input only the current METAR. So the three score that, that Pierre uh, um, did uh, compute and uh, the result, you can hear that uh, in blue we have the uh, the original gem model or, or the RDPS and the extrapolation technique and. and the statistical pop tool uh, forecast in red. So in all uh, the different score for the different all the different score, you can see that the extrapolation uh, is better, and uh, also in the uh, the cold season. But in warm season, you can see that the crossing uh, time is about four between four and five hours. So that means uh, extrapolation seems to be better than the model, and also than the uh, statistical uh, pop tool forecast system. It shows the uh, um, the colon. So uh, we can see the model seems to be a little bit more performant. So crossing, uh, instead of being a little bit forward, it's a little bit after around three, three hours after the uh, observation time. So give you a quick overview of uh, performance uh, based on verification, but there's certainly more to do. 
And uh, so final block we have. A little buzz again. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stop you right there for a second. Okay, back to the future. Uh, okay, FISD operational ability of the system. So uh, there's already some work that was done, but there is still a little bit to do to make sure that the system will be easily implemented whenever uh, it's ready. Uh, we increase the resolution at least to the uh, regional model or the RDPA, which is 10 kilometers. Uh, eventually, it will go down to uh, higher than that to the LAM, probably, resolution, which is 2.5. I uh, also want to evaluate uh, the post placement of the King method with a more uh, efficient method, uh, which is an optimal interpolation scheme that we commit, which is, uh, or in French, Moteur uh, d'Interpolation Statistique, or Statistical Interpolation Engine. And uh, we want also to verify uh, forecasts produced with the extrapolation technique and also compare it with the uh, the interior and outcasting system that we're running actually with, with Scribe. Uh, we, wa we want also to integrate the median analysis and extrapolation into our INCS uh, Scribe system. And another thing that we'd like to do is to compare the extrapolation uh, of the field using the uh, uh, motion vector from Maple, which is the Miguel algorithm for precipitation Lagrangian inspection, and uh, um, the winds that we're using with the uh, Canadian original model, which is either at uh, 700 millibar or 50% of the winds at uh, uh, 500 millibar. Um, we saw maybe to define the best way to select the wind, uh, the extrapolation, and maybe uh, explore the uh, possibility of using the extrapolation approach based on more than one level. So we maybe could uh, use winds at the low level or high level. Apologize again. Okay, almost uh, finished. Uh, the next slide was only uh, for to thank everyone. I come. This okay. So, any question? <laughs> Hi, Club Dave Sills. Yeah. Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, good talk. Uh, just a question. You mentioned that the system is uh, to be totally automated, and I guess you probably could guess this quote was coming from me, but uh, if the need for the forecaster modification in a point based system like Scribe, why don't you see the same need for a grid based system? Oh, I think there's no um, incompatibility with that. It's just that the system. Uh, need to create all this information and produce input with uh, uh, views. You know, I mean, it's it's not a system that can uh, feed, uh, the production for the system, which could be the next the next generation one. So, a forecaster, if if let's say with this system we produce meta object, uh, well, the meta object eventually could be modified by the forecaster. I don't see any problem, you know, uh, uh, integrating this, even if it's fully automated, to integrate this system into a forecast production system, which would be great. Does that answer your question? Okay. So you're thinking this might be able to be used to generate first guess meta objects? Is that it what you're could, saying? Yeah, it could be. Oh, it could great. be. And the, the, the difference 
difference here is just that, uh, as you as you probably notice, it's it's uh, we're focusing on uh, focusing only on uh, high impact weather or some severe weather. Uh, we're going to all the weather element uh, or all kinds of event, but uh, not sure how it will be able to handle right now the uh, high impact. There's a more sophisticated system for that. That's what we're working on, certainly. I mean, uh, so that's why uh, at, at, this, at this point uh, we're still, you know, focusing on the, the large scale and uh, all, all type of weather element. All okay. weather. And yet, high impact weather will also probably change the verification result too. I'm sure. But. We possibly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Hi, Claude. It's uh, Dove Vincent here. Yeah. Does the system work better uh, in areas where the density of observations is higher? Uh, I would think yes. Uh, uh, although I'm not, you know, we're at looking at the system just recently. Uh, but obviously, since the uh, density of the observation are higher, uh, obviously, this will be better. I think, and uh, so that's why it will certainly be uh, more reliable in areas where there is more uh, more observation. Uh, hi, Claude. Uh, very good presentation. Uh, I'm Bourgoin. And just yeah. to, add to, to your answer is that the problem, the problem the system goes well when there are a lot of uh, surface observation, site data, radar data, lightning data. As you go up north, uh, observations are very sparse. There is no uh, geostationary satellite data. There is no radar. There is no lightning. Of course, the system will tend to produce uh, analysis which is less uh, representative and okay. more potent. Thank you. Thank you. Other question? Uh, Francois in Montreal, uh, is that is that why you're using the the real model to fill like for your analysis at the first and uh, the initialization period? The radar and satellite picture and, uh, and these actual data. Yes, we're using the RDPS, the original. Uh, and the blue Canadian model. So that's the gaps where there's no. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> just to that comment, the idea was to develop a system which was not directly fed by NWP models. So, in in, in the sense, we have enough surface observation and tele tele detection data. We don't need the model. So we use the model to complement over oceans, or northern areas, etc. So we we wanted to have something a solution which is totally or as much as possible independent from the NWP model. Thanks. Okay. No questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claude.